Let's work on the first question of the second midterm of ELAC 202, Electric Circuits 2. This question is about second order circuits. A circuit that has, as you can tell, an inductor and a capacitor. In the circuit shown, the sources are on or off according to the U of T or U of negative T functions of time that you've learned in mathematics as unit step or heavyset step functions. These ones. Check them out. The first question A was the circuit after t equals zero. The question is it underdamped, critically or overdamped? Of course, you need to say why your answer is what it is in the corresponding box below. Part B. Write the voltage in the capacitor for t after zero as a function of time. You're provided with those two boxes because, as usual, this exam is graded by final answer only. The source on the left is 4 volts from minus infinity up to and including t equals 0 and it's 0 after t equals 0. That's why that source appears down here in the snapshot at t equals 0 minus as a 4 volts source. But when we represent that circuit for t after 0, the value of the source is 0. It is a short circuit, this one. That is a representation of the source after 0. It's 0 volts, a short circuit. In the case of the current source on the far right is the opposite, you see. If that source value is 0 and has been 0 from t minus infinity all the way up to and right before t equals 0. That's why in the snapshot at 0 minus right before 0, the value of that current source is 0, 0 amps. That's an open circuit. That's why that source does not show here in the snapshot at t equals 0 minus. It is not there. It's an open circuit. Um, but in the representation of the circuit for t after 0, of course, this is a 4 amps current source that in the Laplace domain becomes 4 over s, as you can see that there. Let's go back. The first thing we do in a circuit exercise like this is to take a snapshot of the circuit right before 0 and 0 minus. We realize the circuit's been like that for a long time, as represented above, so it's in steady state. The only one source is the one on the left, is DC, so the circuit is in DC steady state. In DC steady state, we've seen in class, inductors behave as short circuits, as wires. That's why this inductor is represented by this wire here. And capacitors, they behave as open circuits. That's why the capacitor has become this open circuit. In this circuit, in this snapshot, we will compute the initial current in the inductor, IL0, and the initial voltage in the capacitor V0 with that polarity and that direction. If that current IL0 is 4 divided by 3 in series with 5, half an amp. And V0, V0 is given by a voltage divider. 4 times 5 divided by 3 plus 5, that is 2.5 volts. We have the initial conditions of this circuit. In the final exam, where your procedure counts, you would have gotten marks for these two answers, but not in the midterm. The midterm, the only thing that counts are the final answers. Let's move on to t after 0 in the Laplace domain. Well, over there, we will represent the inductor by its full model, which is an impedance LS and a history voltage source, a voltage source that includes the initial conditions in that inductor. This is the resistor, 3 ohms, and this 5 ohms is the other resistor. The inductor is all of these pair of model elements. The impedance, LS, 1 fourth of Henry multiplied by S, and the initial condition source, which is L, IL0. L times IL0. That is um, one quarter of a Henry multiplied by half 
an amp. That is one eighth. Which I represent like this instead of 0 0.125 because as you know I prefer to use fractions of integers for the sake of the HP 50G. Exception made of this little writing lapsus that I had down here. But I will represent that anyway in the calculator as 25 divided by 10 S. The capacitor is represented as an impedance, 1 over Cs. The capacitance is 0.1 farad, so that means that 1 over Cs is 10 over S. And uh, an initial conditions voltage source, uh, that is Vc0 divided by S. 2.5 volts divided by S. In the calculator, 25 divided by 10 S. And the current source, of course, is 4 over S. The Laplace transform of a constant 4 amps. Reference node at the bottom, node 1 on the top. But observe that V1, the voltage of the top node, is just the voltage of the capacitor Vc, so I will call that just Vc. One case equation for that node Vc. Currents going in, only one. 4 over S currents leaving the node. The one here, which is um, Vc divided by 5. And this one, Vc minus the source. 2.5 over S divided by the impedance 10 over S plus the one on the left Vc minus 1 eighth divided by the impedance 3 plus S over 4. Use your HP 50G or do it by hand. Solve for Vc in the Laplace domain and you get the ratio of polynomials right here. From that one you could find what are the eigenvalues by taking the roots of the polynomial in the denominator. You would get three roots, one at zero, another two. The other two are complex conjugate. That would be the reason why you could answer this circuit for t after zero is under damped. And that eigenvalue would have given you two pieces of information. Would have given you sigma and would have given you also omega. And sigma would have been negative 7. And this is square root of 15. So from that eigenvalue, that simple operation of finding the roots of the polynomial in the denominator, you immediately find what is the time constant of decay down here and what is the frequency of oscillation of that underdamped response of the circuit. A lot to get from a simple operation. Now, from this one, we find with the calculator what is the inverse Laplace transform, and this is what we get. It was correct if you wrote this as a mathematician would, with a cosine term and a sine term, that is fine. There, we realize that the time constant is 1 over 7th of a second, and that the angular frequency is root 15 radians per second. The final value is 15 over 2, 7.5 volts. Or, I would rather you had written that the engineer's way, the way it appears on an oscilloscope, as one decaying oscillation, like so. Final value, 15 over 2. And then an initial amplitude multiplied by a decaying sinusoid. The same e to then get a negative 7t multiplied by sine omega t with this phase shift, negative 75 and a half degrees. All of those are volts. And that is the answer to question number one of the second midterm of ELEC 202, this September to December term of 2016. Thank you very much.